So I came, let's let's continue our investigation. <sighs> but we should really be careful. We'll never know what we'll find here. Oh yeah, hey, 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 hey. Hey. How about you guys? The bushes are too thick and thorny to pass through, but how can we get through here? Now oh, we got to take the other way around. What's this? A wetting stone, well worn and covered in rust. And there's something in here. Oh, money. We need to survive too. What's that? Construction material. Whoever planned to build this house left in a hurry. There's so many people here. Is that an alternative? Uh, what's this? There's something hanging here. Ah, magnesium and money. Goes so well together. Hey, you. How do you do? <laughs> the woman next to a bucket of clothes hums an odd melody. Her eyes are closed. You're not sure about the melody, but it might be South Samaran, possibly Sigean, also known as the Apricot Suzrunti. Welcome to the fishing village. Please lean in closer. I have cataracts. Okay. Uh... I, quickly... I won't be going anywhere. She side eyes the bucket full of clothes. Just a tad. Sully ram, sully ram, ram, ram. <laughs> Welcome to the fishing village. Yeah, Please yeah, yeah. lean in closer. I have cataracts. So she doesn't see well. Um, you lean forward. Oh. Welcome, police officer. We don't cause any trouble around here. And we don't want any trouble either. We are not here to cause any trouble, madame. Yeah, be, be quiet. Even though it might be the washerwoman might be behind the conspiracy, right? But the corpse we're hellraisers. <laughs> click, click, bang, bang. No. <laughs> Let's be, I mean, this is an old woman. Don't joke around with her. What he said, we're cops. We don't cause trouble. We take care of trouble. Oh, of course. Last time we saw you around here was 12 years ago. You also came to take care of trouble then. Wish you did. But still, in Martinez, you're considered an ill omen. What? Um. <laughs> the end is here. Wait, I've been here before? No. Not you personally. I ah. met the RCM. Some of the men got into a fight. One of them killed another. Locked himself in that woodshed over there. She points to the building behind her. He was boarding. Needed some help opening the door. You got it open for him. and took him to think about what he'd done in a more secluded place. Somewhere more quiet. She says it as if he was on some kind of spiritual retreat. So what kind of an ill omen are we talking about? Oh, the usual. Dark tidings. Black hound. That's you, all right. A black hound licking your own heels. I'm totally an ill omen. It's exactly what I've been telling everyone. The end is here. You're not. No one around here considers us an ill omen. People would have told us. Ah, come on, Kim. It would have been cool. Maybe they are afraid. Why? Because you're an ill omen. But you're <laughs> still welcome here. As long as men with guns aren't chasing you. And maybe even then. Because that's the kind of fishing village we've built. I'm sorry there's not a lot of room to park the motor carriage. And not a lot of houses. Or a lot of people. My kids are long gone. Searching for treasure. So are others. Ah, look at me ramble on. She waves what her brings hand. you to us? Hmm. Now, um... Where could someone stay around here? Stay? Most people here are trying to leave. 
Well, I need, I need a roof over my head. Nice. That said, if lodgings is what you're looking for, I've got a free room in the shack. How much is it? I won't charge you for it. Take it as a gesture of goodwill from the village to the RCM. Oh, nice. I already love her. There's this guy, Gatti, who makes me give him money every night so just I don't die out in the cold. Hmm. That's exactly how they get ya. That's why we built our own cinder block houses on the seaside. So we don't have to give money to those crooks. We might not look like much, but they are ours. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, isn't anyone using the room? My kids grew up and left like they do. The house is long empty now. I live in the small side attachment. It's easier and cheaper to keep warm. And what time can I, can I just have the room? Aye. The room is pretty bare bones, but it's got a bed and roof over it. That's more than some folks have around here. When Varsen communist revolutionary Ignaz Nielsen was in hiding, he stayed in a hut on the Boreal Plateau for ten months. Huh. Unfortunate that incremental development hasn't elevated this neighborhood yet. I see potential here. It would help me to stay in touch with the proletariat. You best not be plotting another revolution under my roof. We barely got through the last one. But the room, do you want it? You got yourself a tenant. Get keys to your no home. Don't make an old woman regret opening her house to the police. A key appears from under her apron. She hands it to you. Well, if you are not in the hostel in the morning, I'll know where to find you. Here, in a shack. <laughs> yeah. He's a little relieved you're no longer in that room. Should he? This environment encourages one thing and one thing only. Drinking. Yeah, but a, but a bar does that as well. <laughs> what is in this fishing with him? Just us. It's barely a village anymore. We almost don't exist. Almost? What do you mean? This is pretty much a non-place. A gap. A blank spot on the map. Just a cluster of nameless shacks on a nameless street. It's freedom. The place is so pornographically poor, it's not even funny. We're not going to talk about pornography with the washerwoman. She already took the revolution thing bad. Hmm. There's got to be something here, tell me. Over there, you can find more of the same. Shacks and trees growing wild. That's the pox. The pox? What's that? An old military hospital and its surroundings. Oh, it used to be, during the time of the suzerain. After the war, it was turned into a goodwill hospital for shell shock veterans and folks looking for some quiet in the old sanatorium gardens. Nice. Now the area is crisscrossed with nameless streets hmm. and makeshift cinder block houses, shacks as far as the eye can see. What happened to the hospital? The goodwill ran out. The staff left and the place was shut down. It's long gone by now. Nice. And is there a way to make a little money around here? Here? For you? No, officer. The only money we have here is some coins the drunks tried hiding from their women and then forgot about. <laughs> right. <laughs> Who else lives here? Well, there's Lillian and her kids. A few new folks live in the house to the east, but they are away right now. And then there's the drunks. Not a pretty sight, but there's little we can do about it. Home is home, even for them. Who? What drunks? Sooner or later, you'll see for yourself. Don't have to look long to find these guys. All right, there's another topic. She nods, rinsing another piece of cloth. Tell me about yourself. Who exactly are you here? Me? No one. Just an old washerwoman. Mother called me Isabel, if that's what you're asking. And my married name is Sadie. 
Now it's your turn, Mr. Lieutenant W. Freighter Harrier Dubois. Quite a handle you got there. So many titles. One of them double. She's got a couple of ranks herself. On a chief and so on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's further down the coast? Not much. Where's the abandoned church, the Dolorean Church of Humanity? It's been there since before my time, even. Why is it abandoned, then? Some things just don't fly, officer. Look around. Who'd go to church here? They built it 300 years ago. Must have been nicer then. So, they don't hold services there anymore? The Ecclesiastes? Oh, is he a believer? No, we've tried, but things just keep happening. Crime, accidents, other things. The place never stays open. It's a pity. It used to be such a nice church. Maybe, you know, maybe it's haunted. She's not telling you all she knows. Keep her talking. I get the feeling you're leaving stuff out, especially about the church. What else is going on? Well, there's that music. Music from across the sea. Huh. It started a few days ago, and now it's blasting, even through the night. And now, suspicious-looking people are sneaking around the church. I don't like that. Interesting. You could look into this ruckus if you have the time. Perhaps the mysterious music is somehow connected to the case. A Rysalka or a half-demonic uh, yes. Apsara singing. What else is on the down coast? Before you get to the church, there's some ruins. Haunted an apartment ruins. complex or some kind of electrical plant. Run-down bunch of houses. Empty. Which is it, an apartment or electrical plant? I don't know exactly. A pre-war place. It used to be something. Before the war. I wasn't here then, you know. Was born in Samara. Anything else of note? Of note? The old fish market up on the boardwalk. But it's closed. Hmm. Where do you sell your fish then? Who'd want to come to a fish market here? No one. That's why it's closed. <laughs> it was once a bustling place. Back when I was young. And so was everyone else. Now, what catch we do bring in goes straight into a lorry for the Delta or somewhere else. That's it. There got to be more along the coast, like people settling there, right? What? You're one of those real estate people with big plans? If you want a development opportunity, you can check out the abandoned building over at Land's End. Land's End, that's where we wanted to... That's how we wanted to investigate. Used to be a supply depot, we think, sending goods and ammo across the bay. It's jammed shut, though. We tried to get in, see if there was anything to sell or scavenge, but it's impossible. And now you know everything there is to know about this coast. She drops a bar of soap into the bucket with a splash. Well then, goodbye, I'm off and... Uh, <laughs> until tonight, until tonight. Well, let's read a little bit. Let's not forget to... The street sign is illegible below the graffito about the karaoke. Hard to see the details. The colors all warm and welcoming are cozy, though. It's a cozy place. A flower throw where nothing really grows. Maybe, maybe in spring. Ah, oh, we could get in here. Let's try that. So this is an old house of an old woman. Is that our room? No. I couldn't imagine that. Industrial coal pills burn with an orange glow. And what, what's about this burden? Then we'll talk to the kid. What's that? Ruffed grouse taxidermy. That's awful. And you? What are you doing? Hello, mister. A young girl, barely four or five years old, sits on the sofa. She is looking at you with frank curiosity. This is really cozy. I mean, that's that's a home right there. She clutches a small stuffed animal. Occasionally, she twirls it around. Ah. Uh. Well, 
What's that thing you're holding? It's Lammy. He's my friend. Sort of. Like... She holds the fuzzy beast up to demonstrate. Lamby is a stuffed lamb that, admittedly, has seen better days. One of the eye buttons is missing, and the fur is tattered in several parts. Okay, well, pleased to meet you, Lamby. Lamby usually doesn't like strangers. But you're also fuzzy, like Lamby. <laughs> We won't show her the stuffed bird from the ceiling. That's tasteless. Um, I heard there was a girl here who has armored gloves. Is that you? Oh, I had gloves. Very big ones. Heavy, too. Where did you get these gloves? Found them when Lemmy and I were playing hide and seek. In an empty house. Where no one lives. I think someone hid them there. She doesn't want you to think she stole them. And where are they now? I hid them. The twins were going to take them. They're stupid. She lifts a stuffed toy up and looks into its one remaining eye as though searching for confirmation. We are going to need those gloves. It's for important police business. He enunciates the last two words carefully. Oh. She doesn't seem to understand, but the lieutenant's tone has conveyed to her the important part. They're in my sand castle. Behind our house. Under the sand. You can break the castle. It's not very good. That's so nice of you. Where are your parents? My mum's outside. And I don't really know about my dad. She gives you a bright smile. Like it's a good thing. <laughs> Well, um, one last thing. What about, what about the stuffed bird It's a here? grouse! She yelps, smiling broadly. You might be able to get on Gart's good side if you make up for the skewer you broke. Ah. Uh, can, can I have it? I know someone who really likes stuffed birds. Sure. I mean, you already took it. I don't like it anyway. It looks angry. All right, thanks. Bye! The girl's large, curious eyes remain fixed on you. Wow, kids, so helpful. Kids are the best that we've <laughs> experienced so far. Now let's go to the sand castle and get the gloves. Wow. There's the sand castle. Ah, that looks like the sand castle. Come on, run, run, run. It's already very snowy in here. Weather has not been kind to Lily's little sandcastle. The once mighty towers are quickly eroding away. You can see something shining back to you from what must have been a vast underground catacomb network. Broken. The little castle? The reigning lord must have come upon some really tough times to let it sleep in such decrepitude. Yeah, <laughs> reach in the catacombs and pull out the shiny object. The walls and floors give way to the giant's greed, collapse and present you with a pair of ceramic gauntlets. Congratulations, that's the gauntlets down then. We're doing good on the armor collection front. Yes. That's beautiful. Now let's see what we can find out more. Mm. Maybe it's time to hold ourselves together better. I think that's good. And uh, it's gonna be it here. Let's have a look. The tape player. They, do they count as... Oh, <laughs> the fair weather gauntlets. They are better than the gardening gloves. <laughs> all right, all right. I mean... Uh, orange bum head. No, no, no. What other things have we found? The raft grouse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hopefully Garty will like that. As you fold your fingers into a fist, you realize you could knock anyone out with one punch. The white ceramic gloves wrap around your digits comfortably. 
I will be responsible with this. This is just to protect me from harm, not to show off. The hardened, vitreous enamel, at once sleek and light, adds a glow to your cheeks and a spring to your step. Just imagine what a full suit of this stuff could do oh, for yeah, you. Yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah, I want the full suit. It may be a while before you have all the pieces. In the meantime, you should analyze the armor. Figure out its vulnerabilities. Vulnerabilities? Remember, this is a highly specialized kinetic redistributor meant to stop bullets. Wear it. Observe its properties. Ah, yeah. See if there's a weakness in the design. For the day you have to fight someone covered in the same material. What? The suicide of Krasmazov? With a cop of the uh, Acopolyphs. Oh yeah, we could also unlock slots. Well, we'll we'll see. We'll see if we can do that. For now, we increased our volition. I want to see. I mean, we could go straight to guard here, but there's these twins, and we want to see the shack. We'll go to guard here later. Can't see into the house from this angle. What's in here? Money! The door has seen better days. The layer of paint has started to peel off due to the salt and wind from the sea. Even the lock looks slightly rusted. Yeah, okay, we'll unlock. We'll, we'll go in and, and look in our new home. I'll wait outside to give you some time and privacy to check out your new living arrangement. But just so you know, okay. after we are done with the day, I'll still be staying in the whirling in rags for the night. We'll meet in front of the shack in the morning. Nice. The key turns with a satisfying click. You can enter the shack now. Yeah, let's let's see what's in there. Keep waiting for us. I appreciate that. Now we're alone. That's beautiful. Old science fiction magazines, books about bird watching, an almanac from '39. It's just as this was made for us. This intricate heat engine hums quietly, giving out pleasant warmth. Using a thermodynamic expander condenser cycle. Nice. And what can we see from the window? See the waves, the sea, a church. An old mirror hangs on the wall. You see the reflection of your face in it. Adorned with the expression. Ah, yeah, we, but we cannot change anything about the expression for now. What do we have here? The Korovyev jacket. Yeah, but we have the RCM Commander's jacket. It's way better. <laughs> Oh my, oh my. Let's 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 go to Kim again, eh? Hey Kim, where are you? Hey hey. Yes. Nothing, nothing. Well let's 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 get along. Further. Talk to the little boys here. Are these boys? I don't know. They're twins. The scruffy-haired little boy kicks a stone. He can't be more than five years old. The other one looks indistinguishable from him. He watches his brother kick the stone with his tongue lolling out of his mouth. Hmm. Hey, you're pointing out the obvious. You guys look identical. The stone-kicking one becomes frantic all of a sudden, as if that's something to be scared of. The obvious fact that you just stated. Oops. He looks just like me. The other one says, yeah, I said that. The boy doesn't answer. His brother throws another rock. Both of their hair is covered in some kind of dirt. A dirt cap. You're bad with kids. Lieutenant remarks with evident glee. 
And what are you, Kid Master General? Maybe I am. He grinned. Now, how about some actual police work? We are not getting anything here. Hmm. Is little is that Lily your sister? Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. <laughs> hey, where's your mum? The kids don't reply, absorbed in their little game. Okay, let's yes. ask again. Yes. That's it. You're being laconic about it. It doesn't look like he knows what that means. Bye, kids. Take care. Well, that's some kids here, eh? Down rock. They're the rock playing, and we have these guys here. Probably some nice chaps. Hey, tequila! I idiot Doom Spiral, he's called, and he looks like a painting. A 30 something man clad in a two piece licorice tracksuit puts down his pills now and extends his hair in greet hand Good in greeting. Good to see you. How's business? How's the whole reality situation treating you yeah, we'll shake his hand we, i mean we have the we have the gloves on we can and it nothing can happen to us so what's happening picks up his beer wait tequila yeah tequila sunset how are the um high concept reality based adventures proceeding he says it like it's obviously your name like you call someone billy brunel or leader of the fourth street gang good these people know your true name looks like it has preceded you mr sunset more on that later <laughs> so they they know me i mean i have re-entered reality to conquer it to bend it to my will i am the law that's the spirit I used to shape reality into my image a long time ago. Those days are over now. He looks at his shit-stained liquor jacket with a grim expression. Sadly, things aren't going that well in idiot doom spiral land. Haven't found those keys yet, haven't won that great piece of ass back. No word from my business buddies. He takes a sip from his beer. This guy's your buddy, buddy. You feel it immediately. You belong to an organization, a fraternity <laughs> of drunks. Idiot Doom Spiral, huh? This is bound to be a good, high concept conversation. At last. What is a tequila sunset? You keep saying it. It's you. Your tequila sunset. How do you know this? We've met before. Don't you remember? Not really. No, you sure don't. No. Aha. Uh -huh. Do you want to know how Tequila Sunset came to be? Tequila? Tequila Sunset? Something ominous there. Um, something ominous. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Let me take a sip to moisten up my cords. Tequila Sunset rolled into Martinez last Friday. And by Tequila Sunset, I mean you. The man, the myth. <laughs> what? Uh, wait, did we meet on Friday? Hey, let's not jump ahead of ourselves. This is your story. Stop interrupting. He takes another sip, then continues. You got here on Friday to solve a case, hoping to be the early bird who gets the worm. And by the worm, I mean the buzz. Because as far as I know, all you did was get pissed drunk. Word on the street is you went around the local hostel telling people that you're a police officer and that it would be really fucked up if you shot yourself <laughs> in the head right in front of them. That's pretty high concept if you ask me. It is. The lieutenant's brow is furrowed. He's listening as casually as he can. Uh... Oh, God. <laughs> What happened then? It was a late Saturday night when we, the Union of Moribund Alcoholics, were getting our drink on. Nothing remarkable about this, we get our drink on 24-7. Makes everything warm and glowy. I trust you know the feeling. One moment we hear the sound of a motor carriage revving up somewhere on the plaza, followed by a series of dings and bangs. Naturally, loud noises pique the interest of anybody owning a pair of ears. 
That's just the reality we're in. Naturally. Anyway, there was a brief silence. A gasp of silence, if you will. Followed by a real commotion. We heard the carriage careening towards the coast at top speed. <laughs> okay. Sounded like someone jumped the canal. We grabbed our brewskis and rushed to the jetty. Never underestimate the speed of an alcoholic. What we saw was a sight to behold. A beat-up police carriage containing you. Right there on the beach, you revved the engine and screamed at the top of your lungs. What did I scream? The time hath come! Oh, so, great. naturally, being the curious cat I am, I asked what time hath come. To which you replied, The time hath come for tequila sunset! The end of all things! <laughs> oh, God. Every word I said was true. Tequila sunset will break the looms of reality. Yeah, looms. Why not? Then you jammed the pedal and plowed right off the jetty and through the ice. <laughs> oh, God. We ran towards the ice whilst you crawled your way out, miraculously unhurt, covered in seaweed and shit, like some kind of sea monster. When we finally got there, you were sitting on the beach crying. You said that your badge and uniform were in the car. It was too late to get in there, though. The carriage had sunk too deep. Recognizing a brother in need, we offered our condolences and invited you to party with us, which you naturally agreed to. Oh. We asked about the whole tequila sunset thing, and you told us it was your name now and insisted that we all call you that from then on. Uh, sounds pretty good. Yeah, I agree. Smiles. How long did we party for? Hours. It was an all-night drinkathon. Then, at some point, I think it was Sunday morning, you got belligerent and wanted to talk about Revacholian women. How they're beautiful and also whores and so on. Oh my goodness. How one of them fucked you real bad. After a short while, you crossed the event horizon, looked sullen, got up, and left without saying anything. Wow, that's quite a story. Yeah, I bet Tequila's a fucking legend around the precinct. You must be proud to work with him. If you only knew. <laughs> God. Did I tell you anything specific about this person that, uh, fucked me? You were pretty vague about it, but you kept saying you got fucked real hard, and that we've all been fucked too. Please, don't open that door. Ow. No one's fucked me. I do the fucking around here. Abigail. It seemed pretty painful, to be honest with you. If I had to guess, I'd say... You're still working through some shit. Yeah, that's that seems to be it. <laughs> that was kind of dangerous. Did I mention losing anything Beside else? Beside your gun and your badge? You said something about your hope or heart or something. To be honest, the details are a little hazy. In retrospect, I guess you lost your motor carriage too. That's a big one. Hmm. And my colleagues? You told us that they were a bunch of fucking losers oh, whose main on. interest was cramping your style. It's more like you were cramping theirs. No specifics, though. It was more about you that night. You were the star of the show. Hmm. Did you get a read on what kind of cop I was? You kept calling yourself a goddamn superstar who'd cleared 501 cases. As you've already determined, the actual number is just over 200. But what's a little embellishment between friends? Yeah, come on, it's it's just double. No thanks to the squares at the precinct, as you put it. <laughs> Did you talk about politics? Yeah, you kept talking about how the coal mine owners were fucking us all over, just like that no, woman don't talk fucked about you. It. I didn't agree with you, by the way. The spectral hand of the market makes sure everyone gets exactly what they deserve. He takes a long sip of beer. Did I say anything about the case? Yeah, you said it was no biggie and that you'd solve it in no time. And that you didn't need anyone to do it. You're doing it solo now. 
A lot of cops go solo and hermit once they reach that level of alcoholism. It's not meant as a joke. He's sorry for the hermit cop. I don't need to hear any more about this. Thank you for telling me it all. It's a hard thing for a man to confront his past. That's why I avoid mine at all costs. <laughs> you seem like to. You're characterized by your storytelling ability. You want to tell me another one sometime? whoop de doo So now I'm a fucking storyteller. Right. Why not? Better than a beach bum. Yes, want to tell me how you became Idiot Doom Spiral? It depends, really. Are you willing to help me out? You might get scammed here. What do you need? Booze! Did you already forget our party? The thing I relayed to you earlier. So, have you got anything for good old Idiot Doom Spiral? A bottle for a story. Seems fair to me. I don't have any on me right now. Then I will see you again once you've procured some. Par exemple, my good friend Rosemary here sells all kinds of stuff. All kinds, sir. Beer and wine. And he, she is called Rosemary. So what do you do, guys do around here? We are saving the world. He looks at his comrades. Please! Please don't call! Don't call! Begs the man in the pipe. Okay, we're drinking. We're drinking alcohol. That's what we're doing. I tried to save the world once, a long time ago, with enterprise, creativity, and willpower. But that didn't work out. Thankfully, we've come now. So now, it's a pirate's life for me. Be seeing you. You too, Tequila Sunset. My goodness me. Can we talk to the, to the other one? Good ones to as well? see you, friend. Do I have deals set up for you, buddy boy? He spreads his arms as if wanting to embrace you. Uh, what? Well, good to see you too, friend. So, what do you want? I've got smokes. They're cheap. Very cheap. I've got pills now. Great deal. You won't get a better deal on that piss. Spirits I can let go for 300 real. I also have speed. And by speed, I mean amphetamine. Quite the business venture here. Oh. The system's been good to old Rosemary here, and I'm milking her like a bitch goat in the backyard. What do you mean? You see, friend, man makes his own luck. And I made mine real good. Got my hands on three bottles of liquor exqueeze. Sold two to the fellows around here, and immediately invested the profit. Bought cigarettes, bought beer, even bought a bit of speed. And look at me now. I've got everyone on my hook. He spreads his arms and smiles a crooked toothless smile. The hook? Where is it? I can't see it. The hook? Impressive uh, entrepreneurship. <laughs> Point to his wife, Stan. I approve. Mm hmm. Hook them and cook them, huh? You want to buy something? Let's keep it moving. Why does a bottle of spirits cost 300 real? See, friend, it's real valuable. Worth every real, if you catch my drift. Got it from a bit of a business venture. Nod. You know, it's funny, actually. <laughs> it takes three gulps of his pills and stares at you intently. What is? What? Keep him talking. What do you mean, what? What did you think was funny earlier? This guy, this guy. He says and shakes his index finger at you. Conversation might bring a discount, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, where did you get the bottle of spirits from? Oh, this is medicinal spirits. The good stuff. Got it from the doctor's office. I got one of those scientific ampoules a few months ago. Torpedo, they call it. It's supposed to keep a man from taking a drink. Ah, he spits a nasty yellow clot on the ground before you. Didn't stop me for shit, that's for sure. Five lemons with half a pack of butter and you're good to go. What? That's a good tip, I should remember it. That sounds awful. It really isn't. In a week, the goddamn kidney started giving me all kinds of help. <laughs> oh, God. Finally, the missus took me to a private doctor's office. 
Not a charity, the real thing. Those arseholes. Those arseholes charged me four real to remove the damn thing. But I came out on top after all. Uh... How? The idiots left me alone in there. Now, I used to teach high school biology. I know what doctors use to preserve dead fingies. He gets an excited gleam in his eyes. Like three cans of this blue medicinal stuff from the back room. Threw the snakes out and voila. What's left is this beautiful blue stuff. 98.7% almost pure alcohol. Goodness me. Two I already sold to these fine gentlemen here. But this last one is yours for three real if you want it. Three real? I think it will prove useful, yes. Three real and it's yours, friend. The deal of a lifetime. That's a much more reasonable price right there. Makes sense now. Oh, we might need it. Here's Just make sure to enjoy that one, friend. Spirit is eternal. What about the spirit that's eternal? The horrific necktie is getting ready for the end game. For the love of God, do not remove it till the magic happens. Hmm. I have already removed it. Do you, do you have amphetamine? Aye. By amphetamine, I mean speed. I thought by speed you meant amphetamine. <laughs> Aye. That's what I said. Right, got good, it. Good, good, my man. Now, what can I offer you? I'm off. In the civilised world, it's a custom to tip the shopkeep, friend. But come back anyway. He waves you off. I, we bought something for you. Isn't that good? Wasn't that great? Now about what about you? Here on the ground. Cool. Grumbles an unshaved man with a ruddy nose. He narrows his eyes at you as if in recognition, then turns his head away. Don't you call her? Yeah, don't you call Abigail. Who is Abigail? Uh -huh. Abigail, don't you fucking call Abigail? <laughs> Interesting. Abigail. Is his wife or girlfriend? Chances are she's gone. Calling her wouldn't make it any better or worse. You're not going to get anything out of this guy. He's too drunk. Um. Oh well. Tell me about your friends. Don't you fucking call her. Hear me, Abigail. I shouldn't have called her. He snorts and beckons you to lean in closer. We'll risk it. Don't call Abigail. <laughs> Don't call Abigail. Who are you? Don't call Abigail. He says, where am I? What is this place? The man hiccups, then mumbles something unintelligible. Hey, I'm on an important official investigation. I demand you answer my question. There's no use in yelling at drunks. He's barely holding it together. The drunk man starts coughing a really disgusting hacking cough don't 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 call slowly his head nods off to the side and he passes out tongue dangling from there his was mouth. little chance he'd be a reliable witness anyway maybe we should don't still. call don't call her. The drunk man speaks in his sleep. Just drool dribbles from the left side of his mouth and down his jacket lapel. Okay, There's I will let no him sleep. There's no waking it him from his stupor. His mind is elsewhere. Oh my goodness. Hey. <laughs> Cannot leave that here. We're the worst. We're even stealing from the drunks. What was that? A drop in temperature. An easy flow of air, an empty street before you, a thoroughfare unjammed with lorries. No more drivers smoking on hitch steps, just silence. What did the smoke smell like? Chemically sweetened, across the road, a forgotten bus stop. 
Corrosion has opened a hole in its roof. An elm tree watches over the building. Its branches are dripping with rain and snow. It's like the elm tree is alive. The road is smooth and motley. Craters filled with a black asphalt. The asphalt first laid is grey already. A row of tenements are under construction in the distance. Who are the people who live across the road? A tub warm with water, white with soap. A man bathes while radio waves transmit the lottery numbers. Four, eighteen, twenty-one, four, one. A modern washing machine rattles a drawer full of silverware. That's the rich people here, right? His boyfriend is on his way home. He brings tins of meat and vegetables with him. Their pockets are heavier with money, but only slightly. What about the bus stop? Number 312D. Young girls used to come uh -huh. here, huddled up, hoping for more warmth than their thin coats give them. The bus took them to school. It has not run for eight years. There were not enough girls to sustain its cost. <laughs> and what about the road? Craters pocked the surface. Children played in them until heavy trucks full of black pitch rolled in. The landowners have filled the craters with money. It is a vital artery of the flow of trade. That's enough. The wind moves the aerosol. A detective stands behind the boom barrier. A breeze moves a curl of his hair. It's nowhere land. We have arrived in nowhere land, but we must go to Garty. Well, maybe, maybe at, at 8 or 9 p.m. We'll see. Wow. That water looks really unhealthy. But we've seen something here. What, 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 what? what? There was something we've noticed. The water runs from the west. The source is upstream. Maybe a broken pipe. And what's in here? Rust eaten letters read mazout. That's some kind of material. So it comes from here. What is this? Strange building. Unrecognizable. Something hidden in the reeds. Money. Hello there. A rear tire of a motor carriage adorns these reeds. Maybe we can get to the source of this. Maybe it's this thing. Oh, look. A cherche et développe more. We can get up here, I guess. And speak to this man, his son, maybe? Let's see. What's about this? Bars. Cover these long, dusty windows. And Mikhail noticed the windows. Especially with how there are no windows on the south side. This was to deal with. A blonde man stands next to his son, pointing to the weather-worn ruins. He sees you approaching and smiles. You officers! Come to investigate the historic subtext of West Martinez? I'm Tran Heilostam. You must be Kim Kitsuragi, right? I was just telling my son about this building. Not a lot of people realize the historic significance here. Very rich in hypertext. Nice to meet you. Lieutenant nods. Uh, hold on, hypertext? Yes, hypertext. Young Carp and the collection of cultural hyperlinks. Aha. Uh -huh. oh, wait, what's that? what was that about the windows? Oh yes, so Mikhail. They had to deal with monitor glare, especially in the summer. They still had vector monitors back then. That was 49 years ago. So they didn't have windows on the south wall. Hmm. And you and Kim know each other? No, I can't say that we've met before. But I've heard of Kim, of course. Mikhail, say hi to the officers. He rests his hand on the boy's shoulder. The child stays hidden behind the hem of his father's coat, clutching to his worm-themed coloring book. Mikhail's a little tired today. We spent all night trying to run Orbis on his radio computer. Have you heard of it? It's a programming language used in Grad. Quite tricky, but he wanted to play this Grad-made adventure program. We've been getting really into worms lately. 
The man speaks in the artificial cadence of a professor, or someone who's been on too many radio shows. But I assume you're not here for giant worms when there are so many real things to see. Just as I was telling Mikhail before, this is where the Coalition landed in 08. We could be standing on what is the most interesting landmark in Revachol West. He points to the building again. This man is your half-brother. You feel it. But why? Well, get a load of this guy. He really enjoys his trivia. The Orbis programming language was named after its inventor, Victor Orbis, a cybernetician from Grad. They run Vox in the Occidental countries. Ah. So fascinating about an empty old building. Aha! But it's not just any empty old building. He raises his hand to his eyes, springtime sun warming his handsome face. All four of you turn to admire the mural before you. What not a lot of people know is, this used to be the R&D department of Felt Electrical. And Felt, which now sells ink cartridges mostly, was once a top dog in the turn of the century cybernetics boom. Aha, uh -huh. we'll look at it. It looks old and weathered, with seagulls picking apart its stone and metal carcass. Bushy undergrowth has taken hold of the collapsed rooftop. Some kind of bird has set up a nest on a broken windowsill. I don't think I've ever heard of this fellow. That's electrical. not surprising. Only a vestigial ink cartridge and ferrotape manufacturer remains. He just his suit jacket. They started out as a midway electronics outfit in Königstein two centuries ago. After an aggressive move to Revachol, Feld became a global player in the emerging personal electronics market of the pre-revolutionary era. Still, Tricentennial was beating them in business machines. But Feld had an ace up their sleeve. Or should I say, they were developing an ace up their sleeve. I'm mixing my metaphors here. Oh, what was that ace? It was here in Martinez, possibly in this very building, that they developed prototypes for a tape computer. A tape computer? Mm -hmm. An elegant folding mechanism of rollers and ferrotape ribbons, portable enough to be a take-it-home solution. Revolutionizing business machines, possibly even bring them to the average consumer. A personal computer. Which is a feat of engineering even today's giants, Rehm, ICN and Zam, haven't achieved yet. He grins, admiring the sentence he just produced. What happened? Indeed. What? The revolution! The boy wipes his nose on his sleeve. Unfortunately, their moonshot project never made it to the market. Feld's move to Revachol backfired. The revolutionary government liquefied their assets and expropriated those very advanced prototypes. Possibly from this very building, or one of the adjacent ruins. He pauses, pointing to the other building, then continues. All of this was built by Felt, even a boardwalk. While Pines built Martinez proper as a resort for their middle management, Felt built this side of town for R&D. Hmm. So Felt Electrical built this boardwalk? Yes, they even built a pleasure wheel, but that got destroyed in the war. A pleasure wheel? turned looks wistfully at the horizon as if picturing gondolas rising to the perhaps sky. reminded of a childhood memory it's clear he would prefer there were a big wheel lighting up the coast yes to lure in their star engineers this part of martinez was nothing but reeds before Feld arrived they had to make the prospect of living here attractive it was supposed to become a global center for innovation in cybernetics but history had other plans hmm. Crazy. And what what happened to the? You know, you know what? I think we're going to make a short pause here. I wanted to ask something. But of course, else. <laughs> what else? He smiles and ruffles his kid's head. Thank you for now. We'll come back to you. No, thanks to you for having me and little Mikael here to pick your brain. A very interesting conversation indeed. Pick your brain. If anything, this was rather one-sided. He did the talking. Whatever. Very good manners. We'll come back to this. Not now. To the man and his son. The man who thinks all of this has meaning still. The past. Influencing the now. Happy gaming and see you soon, my friends. 
Kim. This is progress, right? <laughs> I feel a little weak, but this is progress. 